Day 64 of the lockdown, a.k.a. Never Ending Story. Uh, like a lot of people, last night I watched The Last Dance. And it brought back a lot of memories because I went to game six of the 1998 NBA Finals. Brian Russell left me tickets. And it was kind of funny how it happened. Like, me and Brian had a mutual friend named Face. Face was a bad mother. And Face called me on left field and was like, yo, G, you want to go to the game tomorrow night? Now, we in L.A., and I was like, well, well, when are we leaving? Are we flying? He goes, no, I'm driving. He goes, be at my house. Literally, he was like in an hour. I was like, all right. So he said, you can bring somebody if you want. I got I got two extra tickets. So I called my buddy. We we got in a car. We go over to Face's house. We head on out. We leave uh, L.A. the night before. We get to Utah, middle of the night. Uh... Get a, get a hotel. Next morning, we get up, run around Utah, get ready to go to the game. So we go to game six. Now, Brian had it laid out. Like, we parked in players parking. Uh, we went, like, through the tunnel. So I got to see, like, the Bulls running out. I got to see the Jazz running out. And then my tickets was the first row behind the Jazz bench on the second level. Not the first level, the second level. And what I remember about the game was there was a couple things. One, I remember they, they did the fan. There wasn't a ton of celebs, but the celebs, they went there. They went to Leonardo DiCaprio, and he, he was like Titanic. That's like Titanic was number one. And I was like, oh, shit, Titanic. But the celeb of that game was David Hasselhoff. David Has They went to David Hasselhoff about ten times, and every time they went to him, David would go, yeah. <laughs> like Utah would be like, yeah. The crowd would go nuts and he'd stand up and pump his fist. Yeah. About 10 times. And here's what pissed me off about the game. Was, uh, I mean, yeah, of course I'm rooting for the Jazz. I was a Jazz fan. Brian used to always bring me to Utah for all his um, events, whether it was charity softball game or he's, he's having a party I'd hosted or a concert I'd hosted. And the guy I bring with me to game six of Chicago versus Utah, when I called him, I said, yo, uh, I name dropped. I said, my boy's Brian Russell. And he left me an extra ticket if you want to go. He said, yeah, motherfucker's a Bulls fan. He don't tell me that. And I'm cool with it, but be subtle about it. He goes to the game. We sit down. This motherfucker starts like really rooting for the Bulls. Loud. And I'm looking at him and going, you know, a dude from the Jazz left the tickets, right? And then uh, what really bothered me, it was Okay, so at halftime, we go down, and we were hanging out in the, like, players' family lounge. So there was, like, Stockton's kids was in there, Malone's kids was in there. Like, all, all the players' kids was in there. And they had, like, a nursery because a lot of kids were little. And then uh, and then I'll never forget, we're, we're sitting there, and we can see the Jazz coming to back from the locker room to the court uh, at halftime. And this motherfucker had the nerve to look at Carl Malone and be like, man, man. I'm like, you, you're not rooting for him. Don't acknowledge him. And like, I'll never forget, Carl was like messing with his wristband, like looked over sideways. And I was just like, what? so we go back to our seats. Then the Jazz lose. So an hour later, we go to Brian's house. And now this dude is like, oh man, tough game. And I called him out. I said, motherfucker, you was rooting for the Bulls. <laughs> I called him out in front of Brian Shannon Anderson. I said he was, he was rooting for the Bulls the whole game, and Brian didn't give a shit. He, didn't, you know, it's cool. But I just remember that was like I was so young and naive. I didn't realize what a. And then watching the Last Dance tonight, I was like, man, that was kind of cool being at Game Six. I know some of you probably think Gary Lyon. Well, I got receipts. I'm gonna show them to you right now. For those of you that are gonna be like, man, you lied. You, you do all that. I got receipts. Okay, there's young Gary right before I'm about to head out to go to game six of the 98 finals. Man, I was young. There's game six. There's Brian getting introduced. So I made sure I got a shot of him getting introduced because you can see we were in the first row of the second level. So you can see 98 NBA finals. And there's right, you know, like probably... 
two minutes there for the Bulls won. You can see the Jazz going back to the locker room. The Bulls are starting to celebrate. And there's when they was lifting the trophy and announcing. That's when they, you know, everybody was on the podium right there, the Bulls. There's Brian and Kim and their oldest daughter. That's literally hour after the game, hour and a half tops. And there's Brian and Shannon. And I think that's Shannon's daughter. So she's got to be, god dang, 24, 25 now. And family. You see Brian's real heartbroken over the game. <laughs> he was he is a goofball. And Shannon. God damn, where's Shannon at, boy? That was he was there that now Shannon was a cool mother. So if I've never told you, Brian, thank you. Thank you for that like once in a lifetime experience. Cause I was literally just like a up and coming comic. And that was a, that was just a good time. God, it sucks they lost. It was really rooting for him too. But it brought back a lot of memories watching The Last Dance. And then, you know, here's what's crazy. So the next year, a lot of people forget it was uh, a strike. There's an NBA strike. Brian brought me in for his, he had a New Year's Eve show in Salt Lake. So he brought me in for the New Year's Eve show. And so NBA players could like organize, they could play games with other NBA players, but it couldn't be like organized. NBA couldn't sanction, no coach and shit like that. So... Uh, Brian picks me up from the hotel. This is December 31st, so it's New Year's Eve. And he's going to shoot hoops with a bunch of NBA guys. They're going to run some pickup games. So I just roll with them. So I get to the gym. Now, I'm in gym shorts, basketball shoes. I'm just going to shoot on the side, right? So Stockton's there. Uh, obviously, Brian's there. I remember Andre Miller was there, but he was playing for the Utah Utes at the time. Michael Doliak was there. Ike Austin uh, I think I think Shandon was there. Shandon was there. Howard Isley, but so it's all these like NBA guys, right? So when we got there, here's the crazy part: when we got there, there was only nine, and they were waiting for a couple other guys to show up. But Stockton was ready to run. Everybody's like ready to run. So Brian, I'm a young guy, so I'm in my early twenties. I'm in shape. So Brian's like, let's just let Gary run till the other guys get here. So everybody's like, all right. I'm thinking, oh fuck. I'm going to play pickup with NBA basketball players and John Stockton. And John shut it down. John Stockton went, nah. <laughs> he, he would not let me play. Like literally John Stockton said, no, he's not playing. And at first I was like, man, John Stockton's a dick. But then I look back, I'm like, okay. He was like, nah, we need to get good runs in. We got to be sharp because once this strike's over, we got to be ready to play. So he just was like, he sh when I say shut it down, he goes, nah, we're just going to wait till the NBA, other NBA guys get here. But I just remember sitting in the stands watching these NBA guys run pickup. And it was the funniest thing because Andre Miller was sitting in the stands with me. I don't think he could play because he was, you know, he was still in college, I think. I think he was a senior. That was his senior year. And uh, I rem <laughs> what I remember is uh, it was like all the big ass Obviously, NBA players, big black dudes, right? And then you got Stockton, who's, he, I mean, he's a he's tall for an average man, but NBA, he's short as shit. And I remember they were trying to even the teams out. And all the brothers kept arguing, like, but that ain't fair. You got John. But nah, but you got John, though. And I was just thinking, this is weird. Because you got all these big black guys saying the teams ain't fair because you got John. The little white dude makes the teams unfair. So I was like, but you got John. So it ain't fair. We got to even this up. You got, and John, just, I remember John just sitting there with the ball, like, are we going to play or not? But I thought for a brief moment, I was like, oh, fuck, I'm about to play NBA basketball. <laughs> I'm about to play with a bunch of NBA players. <laughs> I, I literally in the back of my mind, like, I'm about to get discovered. I'm going to hit a couple threes and they're going to see me and be like, where you been our whole life? John shut the dream down. But I got it afterwards. I was, Brian told me, because nah, John, John takes it serious and he's trying to run. Serious ball. I was like, that makes sense. Once I looked back, I was like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, because season can start in a week. But it was just cool experience. So, Brian, if I never told you thanks, thanks, brother. Those were some good times in Salt Lake. All right, y'all. See you tomorrow. I, I was supposed to do military Mondays today, but I'm going to do a military story tomorrow. But I just thought the last dance was too timely. And I had to dig into crates for these pictures. I was in my garage. Like, I know I got pictures from game six. So, because I know how people are. What the f are you lying? All right, y'all. See you tomorrow.